Hello, thank you for including me on this panel. I'll begin with why teach transhumanism? The world's biggest challenges are facing all of us and learning how to recognize the causes and the potential solutions. This diverse knowledge model includes the mindset, the skill set, and the network to discuss, discover, and debate strategies. The network includes AI, robotics, digital biology, and emerging technologies that are interfacing with our everyday systems. Transhumanism is an era in which we now find ourselves today. This era needs critical thinking and visionary insight. And to learn to think like futurists, not like science fiction authors or science fiction utopians or dystopians, we need to build frameworks for the future to develop how to adapt to the changes ahead, to understand the impacts and to balance the pros and cons of advancing technologies, and yet to build trajectories of what the future might be beyond binary thinking, hegemony, inequities, and human strife. Should transhumanism be taught? Well, a particular answer is yes, of course. A specific answer is that the characteristics transhumanism undertakes are to question how social and economic models affect human rights and to seek opportunities and choices through alternatives. These strategic alternatives form the narratives. Consider postmodernist rhetoric. Postmodernism teaches us to distrust meta narratives. Transhumanism teaches us to question, investigate, take action, and to explore scenarios that trigger alternatives and opportunities. Practical optimism. Now, here are specific tools that I include in the transhumanist mind shift. First, reframing our viewpoints. How do personal beliefs and outlooks clarify or diffuse what is occurring in the world? How do we get a better perspective on accelerating change? And number two, scanning the horizon. This is a very typical one. What developments are on the horizon? What are the impacts and how impactful are they? What is occurring that might cause events that are unforeseen or unintended consequences? And what ones will cause potential opportunities and challenges? The last one here is forecasting. Forecasting is all about those narratives, storytelling. And in order to be efficient at forecasting, we need to consider what could happen in the future and develop several different trajectories or preferred futures. Why study transhumanist topics? At the Center for Transhumanist Studies, which I founded in 2021, my aim was to help learners and leaders adapt to a world of masses change. At Transhumanist Studies, we consider that people, regardless of their differences, their background, their educational levels, it's all superfluous, that what we want is the intent of the person who wants to learn about what it means to be human, what's going to happen in the future. Will there be automation? Will I lose my job? How am I going to deal with inflation? What about longevity? Is there going to be overpopulation? Is AI going to be out of control? And then there's nanotechnology, molecular manufacturing, and the list goes on and on. These topics are core to transhumanism. In fact, they have been discussed for many decades. At Transhumanist Studies, our aim is to help people gain knowledge as a goal. This knowledge includes an ability to recognize and prepare for unpredictable events and social unrest by exploring the integration and the relationship of people, events, technologies, and advances in science. Study and learning about what makes us human, how we evolved and, and where our species came from, where it's headed, what we do with ourselves is an important undertaking. It's been located in the field of humanities and evolutionary biology, anthropology, social sciences for decades. 
Why do we need social justice and equity? What are our moral, spiritual, and intellectual similarities and differences? And how can we learn to be more compassionate and humane? Because in this transhumanist era, one of the most consequential questions about our species is, what does it mean to be human? There is a strong need and a big desire to understand what our purpose is as a species and as a human being. And not all these purposes will be the same. Humanities and transhumanities can tell us about ourselves, how we interact and why we not always get along. The transhumanist mind shift is not located in any one field, academic department or business agenda. It is everywhere. The history of transhumanism is consequential because in those earliest decades, we addressed AI, we addressed robotics, we addressed encryption and blockchain and Bitcoin. We addressed technologies that have now become mainstream. And within transhumanist studies, we have the primary sources with videos and published articles and books and references to help learners gain enough information that they can continue learning on their own. But I always felt it's very important to build a foundation of knowledge based on primary sources and firsthand experience. When I wrote the Transhumanist Manifesto, it was arrived at from the earlier writing in 1983 called the Transhuman Statement. In 1992, it was rewritten to be the Transhumanist Manifesto. That manifesto has grown a bit, as we all should, and as information ought to, to be more clear in understanding the purpose and goals of transhumanism. In closing, I want to touch on the important factors of what the takeaway in transhumanist studies is and why it's important to reframe our viewpoints, to learn about what is on the horizon, to be effective at scanning, looking ahead, to be able to put those ideas, those visual insights together to form scenarios and to better be able to understand the pros and cons and the best options at the time in building scenarios and strategies for the future. Thank you. Of your research. Let's take that to being human and where we are. We're in a world of AI and lots of terms and knowledge being tossed about and wow, it's fantastic and it is, but let's get smart here. Learn about these terms. Learn about who is authentic, who's telling you reliable information, and who's not. Make sure that you know what's being said. Don't be pulled aside by your emotions or politicizing. You be the first-hand person of your own research and knowledge gathering. It's your time to sing and shine. And that's what I think is the new human mindset. The differences to modernize the rights of living longer and taking our humanness with us, the responsibility of knowing who is programming the AI for goodness sakes. If there's going to be strong AI, who on earth is programming it? What is the responsibility there? And each one of you should have a stake in this because it does make a difference to you. And I think that the human capability for empathy and compassion far exceeds any other quality that we have besides our precious gift of life.